You might know Mark Twain as the author whose name was almost synonymous with American literature, poking fun at political corruption or highlighting the absurdities of everyday life. You might admire his mustache or monochrome fashion statements. So here's a puzzler for you. Was Mark Twain a feminist? Scholarly circles have hotly debated this question, and while some view him as a progressive advocate for women's rights, others suggest his attitudes were sometimes contradictory. In the early years, Twain's views were not notably progressive regarding women's issues. But interestingly, his perspective on women's rights took a significant turn after meeting Olivia Langdon, the woman he later married. Olivia and her family were active in the abolitionist and women's rights movements, and so their influence made a huge impression on Twain. In a 1901 essay, Twain expressed strong support for women's suffrage, arguing, I should like to see the time come when women shall have votes, when women, because they are women, are shut out from any of the privileges and immunities of citizenship, then something must be radically wrong with the governmental system under which they live. And here, Twain seems to advocate for gender equality. This isn't an isolated incident. In a 1909 interview, he said of women's right to vote, I not only advocate it now, but have advocated it earnestly for the last 50 years. To win freedom always involved hard fighting. I believe in women doing what they deem necessary to secure their rights. And this public support and close relationships with reformers like Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Harriet Beecher Stowe suggest a sincere alignment with the feminist movement. Yet, to address whether this advocacy was enough to deem him a feminist, it helps to broaden the scope. Was it consistent? Did his fictional works promote feminist ideals or did they sometimes contradict his public stances? For instance, Twain's portrayal of female characters is both progressive and problematic. In Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, he creates the character of Mary Jane Wilkes, who is intelligent, capable, and morally upright. Twain describes her in terms of the elevator above the male characters with her honesty and decency. She had a good spirit to her and a big heart, and she was that upright that it made a body ashamed to do anything low. However, Twain also wrote works like The Gilded Age, in which the portrayal of female characters reflects the conventional views of women in the domestic sphere and might detract from his more progressive stances. The Hawkins family were in a turmoil of high spirits, of pride and hope, the female members flying about hither and thither, jesting, adorning, consulting, full of business and importance. Now, there's another aspect of Twain's later life that complicates labeling him a feminist. He created the Aquarium Club, a group of young girls aged 10 to 16 whom Twain affectionately called his angel fish. Twain met these girls during his travels and corresponded with them regularly, categorizing them as surrogate granddaughters. I collect pets. Young girls, girls from 10 to 16 years old, girls who are pretty and sweet, naive and innocent, dear young creatures to whom life is a perfect joy and to whom it has brought no wounds, bitterness, and few tears. And while Twain described these relationships as purely platonic and paternal, many question the appropriateness of an elderly man seeking the companionship of much younger girls, regardless of his stated intentions. Even if it were quite innocent, Entries in his autobiography objectify the young women. And this segment of Twain's life adds a layer to discussing his feminist credentials. It challenges us to consider how different contexts and times influence our interpretation of personal relationships and whether these actions align with or contradict feminist values. From supporting women's voting rights to the collection of pets, it compels us to think critically about the man behind the mustache and what he represented in the context of his time. He was a man who often pushed for progressive changes that would benefit women, vocally supporting their education and political rights, yet his life and works reveal inconsistencies and contradictions. Sometimes he was a forward thinker, and at others he conformed to less equitable views. So it's difficult to slap a label, including that of feminist, on him. If you enjoyed this video, like, share, and subscribe. Your support means the world. And maybe I'll see you next time in this video.